yes, when people see content more often, they there's a simple frequency bias in our psychology that we believe it's more likely to be true. And when platforms are force feeding disinformation to people through their newsfeed, which is an act of publishing, you know, this, this myth that what you see is the content of a billion people, of course you don't. You see a timeline that's structured specifically for you. This is not a global discourse. This is a discourse that's controlled by algorithms, which are designed for commercial impact. And of course, they led directly to people. You saw again and again in the witness testimony of people uh, who were charged with crimes relating to the January the 6th in the direction and the Capitol about four blocks down from my house here. Or it is, um, or it's the testimony of my friends and my colleagues who work in the medical profession who told me about people who were choking to death in ICUs begging for a vaccine that they had once thought would harm them and that it was now too late to administer. And many of those people went on to die. So there are human beings, there are tragedies, there are families today bereft because directly of the disinformation that was pumped actively as an act of deliberate publishing to people. There are people today in terror attacks that we know have been uh, victims of terror attacks, their families. I was speaking in Pittsburgh at the Tree of Life Synagogue quite recently. And again, we see the effect of, you know, these, these, these uh, conspiracy theories being force fed to people such that they think it is acceptable and normal, and that other people would approve that they killed people because of the God they worship or who it is that they choose to love.